For some time now, I have been needing to build a proper website for the YouTube channel. So I started this YouTube channel about two years ago. And when I started the channel, I also registered some domain names, including distrotube.com. And for a long time, I didn't put anything at that domain name. The only thing that domain name did was redirected you to my YouTube channel. And then about a year ago, I put up a very simple WordPress site on that domain name just to have something there. But I didn't ever tell you guys about it. I never directed people to that website. I don't even link to that website, distrotube.com, in the show descriptions or anything like that anywhere on my YouTube channel because I knew I was going to eventually wipe that site out. I really didn't want to do a WordPress site. What I wanted to eventually do is move to some interesting new technology. I wanted to build a static website. And there's a lot of static website generators out there. One of the most popular ones is Hugo. And that's what we're going to discuss today. Let's take a look at the Hugo website. It is located at gohugo.io. And you see, Hugo is the world's fastest framework for building websites. Some interesting things about Hugo is it's open source and it generates static websites. You basically write all your content in Markdown and then you do a simple command and Hugo changes it into HTML for you and creates this really nice static website. Doesn't use things like databases and PHP and things like that, you know, things that I often complain about the web being slow. And part of the problem of the web being slow is dynamic websites, these dynamic websites where, you know, they have this just massive and massive amounts of data stored in databases that the website has to call upon. We're not dealing with anything like that with Hugo. It's just HTML. It's just beautiful, plain HTML, static sites, no databases. So if you want to start building a website using Hugo, the first thing you need to do, of course, is install Hugo. Great thing about Hugo, no dependencies, right? You're not, it, it, you don't have to pull down anything else with Hugo. You don't even have to install like the LAMP stack, you know, the Apache web server. Of, of course, MySQL is not involved. We're not dealing with databases. PHP is not involved in Hugo. So you don't have to install any of that. It's just one package, Hugo. So in Arch, sudo pacman dash capital S Hugo and Debian or Ubuntu sudo apt install Hugo. And I know some of you are going to ask, well, what do you mean you don't have to install Apache or Nginx? How are you going to serve these web pages without having a web server installed? Ah, Hugo is its own web server. And it, well, it has its own web server built in, which is great for local host. You don't have to fool with a LAMP stack. You just do everything on local host using Hugo's built in web server. Now, when you eventually get your own web host, you know, your own web server somewhere and post this to the public. Yes, you probably will want to run Apache or Nginx on that machine rather than using Hugo's built in server. But once you have Hugo installed on your local machine, we need to discuss exactly how content is organized in Hugo. Basically, you know, you're going to start a Hugo project. You run a simple command, Hugo new site, and then the name of the project, and it creates a folder for you. And that's where your new Hugo website will be. And basically, you create this hierarchy of directories and files. For example, you, in your new Hugo project, you will have a directory called content. As the name suggests, that is where all the content for your site, and that's where the actual blog post or article post or whatever are actually supposed to be located. So in the content directory, you can create subdirectories like about, and that will magically create your domain name.com slash about. And then in that about directory, you can do an index.md, index.markdown. Write whatever you want in Markdown, and that will be the index page for your domain name.com slash about, if that makes sense. I'm going to show you this in action, though, in just a second. I'll pull up a file manager and actually show you uh, my site running here on localhost. So let me switch over to a terminal. And how you do this is first you install Hugo on your local machine. 
It's typically where you want to run Hugo. Uh, you could run it on the remote machine on your web server as well, but you don't necessarily have to because you can always generate your static HTML site on your local machine and then just upload that to the web server. Or you could upload just the markdown content to the web server and then run a command and generate the HTML files on the web server. But you probably want to do what I, I suggest doing is doing all this on your local machine and then uploading the static generated site to the web server. So start a new Hugo project. What you would do is wherever you want to create this directory, you type Hugo space, new space, site space, and then the name of the new Hugo project. So Hugo new site project. I don't have to do this. I've already created a Hugo site. If I do an LS, these are the directories in my Hugo directory. And these were for the most part automatically created when you run Hugo new site. It creates these directories, archetypes, content, data, internationalization, layouts, resources, static, themes, and then you have one file also called config.toml, and that is your config file. If I open that, by the way, in Vim, this is the config file, and you can see, first of all, you need to set the base URL of the site. You know, I'm gonna, when I put this on my web server, it'll be located at distrotube.com. You can change the title of the site. Uh, what theme it's using this identifies what theme uh, in the themes directory if you have multiple themes to choose from and then you have some content stuff if i scroll down here a little bit you will see i uh, have different sections of the index page the main front page you know just plain text of course and it's pretty easy syntax to follow the hugo documentation by the way is fantastic it's it's very easy to get into i mean it's got a little bit of a learning curve but it, it's nothing crazy if you've ever built a site using things like wordpress or joomla you know those kinds of content management systems you'll find hugo to be just a breeze of course we already mentioned that the content directory is where all the content goes in Hugo. So if I CD into content, do a LS, I created five subdirectories about blog, contact, merchandise, and videos. So the videos directory is the important one. So I would have, in my case, distrotube.com slash videos. And I created that by adding that videos directory in the content directory. So, and then if I CD into videos, so if I do a quick CD, and then do an ls. Uh, I should have done that ls command with the less <laughs> command because that's almost 600 videos in that directory. That's 600 markdown files that I had to create. I had to write and create. It took me some weeks. I've actually been working on this Hugo site, oh, at least two months. Now, it's been a long time, but you know, I mean, to I have to write a post for every single video I ever created and then I have to link to all those videos somewhere I'm hosting all my videos by the way on Amazon s3 so I've got them stored in an s3 bucket let me just pull up one of these so if I do a quick vim and I see Zorin this is what each of these markdown files in my videos directory looks like it's pretty simple format right you got title image so i've got thumbnails i downloaded thumbnails for every single one of my videos so i've got my thumbnails um, i've got dates i've got the author is of course me then tags and this is you know kind of like blog tags and then i've actually got the body of the post which is the link to the video and then the show notes and the show notes were pretty straightforward i just ripped those straight from the show notes on youtube so let's start the hugo server and see my website in action. So the first thing you need to do is make sure that you CD into the main directory of your Hugo project. So if you do an LS, you should see your config.toml in that directory. This is the directory you need to be in and then run this command, Hugo space server. This starts the Hugo server. By default, the Hugo server places your website at localhost colon 1313. It uses port 1313 uh, if it can if for some reason that port is already in use it will pick some other port but it doesn't pick 
localhost colon 80. 80 is your typical port for your Apache web server, Nginx web server. It, it doesn't use that. It always tries to default to localhost 1313. If we go and see this in action, let me pull up my web browser. Right now, uh, it didn't load, but I ran this before I started the web server. Now that I've started the web server, localhost colon 1313 does load. This is my website running here on my local machine. Everything looks good, although there's some image problems here. It says generic placeholder image. It means that one of the images didn't load. It's probably the path is not correct, or at least the path is not correct here on my local machine. Once I upload it to my web server, those paths may be just fine. Uh, you guys want to see this live in action on a web server? I can actually show you that as well. The first thing you want to do, though, let me stop the Hugo server here on my local machine. Do an LS again. You see, we have these folders, archetypes, content, data, internationalization, etc. Now, to actually create a static HTML website that something like the Apache server can render, because right now the Hugo server showed us that side ish because it does this magic. It converts all those markdown documents to nice HTML pages for us, but when you're running this on a typical LAMP stack, you know, with the Apache server or the Nginx server, it's not going to be able to do that. It's not going to be able to render all those markdown documents for you. You actually have to convert all of that to HTML. And Hugo has a command that allows you to do that. You run Hugo space dash V. And when you run this command, magically, you will have a new directory appear called public. And the public directory will have your entire site converted to static HTML pages that you can just upload to your remote web server. And if it's running Apache or Nginx, it'll render it just fine. It will render it at your domain name dot com slash public. And, or of course, you could redirect it to some other directory or even to a top level directory if that's what you want to do. And once you have that public directory created with your static HTML, just upload it to your web server. You don't even have to have Hugo on your web server. You can just generate it on your local machine. And once you generate the site, upload the site. Or if you wanted to, you could do everything in Markdown using the Hugo server on your local machine, upload all the Markdown stuff. And then if you have Hugo installed on your web server, you can run Hugo space dash V and generate the static HTML that your Apache server should be able to handle. Uh, I would probably choose the first option, and that is the option that I went with. So if I go back to my web browser, and let's go to distrotube.com. And this is distrotube.com on the web. It looks the same as my localhost. Once you get it looking good on localhost, just upload it to the web. On the web, the uh, images actually load. So it was a problem with the path of those images because the images are not in the same path on my local machine as they are on the web server. But the video category works just fine. Uh, it's like one of the images did not load. I don't know if that was just a one-time glitch. Yeah. And then I have a blog category, which I created three blog posts. Uh, there's really nothing to read here. It was just uh, something I threw together rather quickly just to have something in this category so I could see the layout. Uh, I have an about section here, which I really didn't do anything with. Contact is really just some links to various social media. Spent a little time on this. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Spent a little time on this website. Uh, Hugo has been fun, though. This is interesting technology. I'm going to enjoy playing around with Hugo. And, you know, as I play around with it, I might do more of some videos on Hugo. I might actually do some deep dive stuff into how Hugo works because, you know, there's there's a lot to Hugo. I'm not going to lie. The, uh, the template format of it as well, it does use kind of like a smarty kind of template language that you can use with it. Some of that, you know, it's got a learning curve to it. And then if you're not used to doing things in Markdown, Markdown itself has a learning curve. All in all, though, I'm, I'm pretty happy with Hugo. I was really excited to finally put up a proper website. And you guys know I hate bloat. I love the fact that it is served as static web pages. I think this needs to be done more often. I think way too many sites out there. At least 95% of the web is running on 
database-driven websites when they don't have to be. Now, some sites have to be, like they're legit so big and they're massive, and I understand why those need to be run on dynamic sites, but I think static websites make sense for the vast majority of the population. So if you're interested in setting up a website, guys, check out Hugo. I think you'll be impressed. Now, before I go, I need to thank a few special people. This show was made possible by Ansem, Chris, Daniel, David, DJ Stallman, Donnie, Dylan, George, Haplo, Corbini, and Lambda, Liam, Mitchell, Natek, Rob, Robert, Sean, and Willie. They are the producers of the show, my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon without these guys. This episode about building static websites with Hugo would not have been possible. The show is also brought to you by all those other fine ladies and gentlemen, all those names you see on the screen that help support my work over on Patreon. If you'd like to support the channel, please consider doing so. You'll find me at DistroTube over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace.